Dr. Randy Curtis understands the miracles of the human body, how muscles, nerves, and organs somehow cooperate to keep us moving. And he, more than most medical professionals, has a deepening respect for what happens when those systems start to fail. I started noticing slowing in my speech <coughs> and a little more coughing with eating and drinking in uh, <coughs> January of this year. At first, he tried to ignore it. Even doctors are sometimes reluctant to face grim news. The symptoms worsened, and after visits with specialists, Curtis told his wife Amy the diagnosis, ALS, a terminal disease which will eventually rob him of his ability to speak, eat, and breathe. It was shattering for both of us. The doctor is now a patient, one with a profound understanding of what is to come. Dr. Curtis is an expert in end-of-life care, one of the field's leading researchers who's helped countless patients navigate the difficult decisions they must make in their final days. So much of what we know about palliative care and communications around end-of-life care in the ICU is because of the work that Randy has done. So I'm Randy Curtis and I am a professor of medicine. Curtis isn't just a specialist, he's director of the UW Medicine Cambia Palliative Care Center of Excellence. All they do is work with patients who are seriously or terminally ill. Curtis says he's tried to change people's perceptions of that often scary chapter of treatment. I don't feel like palliative care is associated with dying. It's associated with serious illness and with having the best living that you can while you have serious illness. He says that means helping patients do things they truly value with the time they have left, rather than avoiding reality or focusing only on the clock running out. Here's a good example. Curtis is still working. I'm always up what I do. I really love what I do now that I let go of all the things I found irritating and less important. He says for him, mentoring others has been and still is a priority. It's one of the most rewarding things I do. Away from the office, he's spending more time with his family. And while he's devoted decades to studying the journey he's now on, there are aspects of this experience no amount of knowledge can fully prepare him for. I've had times since the diagnosis where I'm really able to focus on joy and gratitude. But I've also had times where I'm overwhelmed by sadness and loss. Um, and I wish that my experience in health care could make the sadness and loss easier. I don't think it does. It's just something you have to go through. There's no shortcut around it. It might sound odd, but Curtis says there are times when he thinks of his diagnosis as a gift, a reason to let go of the stuff that doesn't really matter and enjoy these final miles. Dr. Curtis says discussing the next stages of his care with other specialists, some of whom are friends, helps him come to terms with his illness and the time he has left. These are discussions many families and patients are reluctant to have, but he says they're tremendously important, and that's been a big part of his work, getting people to talk about these issues more. It's so remarkable. I know he said he has some days where he feels sadness and loss, but he has a really great attitude about it, saying that it's a gift. A lot of courage, but also he admits there's some definitely hard days. Just so interesting to watch that and you have that. When I, I just asked you about it while you were, you were playing it, watching his voice just not too long ago, I guess that was a couple years ago, to what it is now, yeah. but the fact that he's still so physically fit and out there every day and still working. And exercising yeah. and doing yeah. all this work. What a great story. Thanks, Thanks Ted.